Hello and welcome back, mateys. We're gonna go back to Nekataka. Atura wants to talk with us. Not sure about what. Some kind of new fancy mission. Hopefully getting paid. That would be nice. And, uh... Yeah, the morale is going down a little bit. But overall, it's holding steady at 92, which is pretty good. So, let's go into Nekataka. Brass Citadel. Imperial Command, lower. And I really want to go northeast, but if we have a mission, and we get a mission for a northeast of uh, the Deathfire, then yeah, sure, I guess we'll do it. I have to say, uh, the fact that I did learn of uh, that, that the Deathfire company is not exactly uh, benevolent and... Uh, won't say what it is. And, and kill civilians and whatnot. Definitely didn't help. You haven't figured it out. I thought but it was obvious. I don't really you have other factions that so I like, smart. so... I don't know. Anyway, Atsura, let's talk. Atsura glanced at you with... surreptitiously Mirthful expression. It looks like he is... In on a fabulous secret. One he's about to share with you. It has been brought to my attention that you ousted the slavers from Crookspur. What? How dumb are you? So, I guess this is what... Uh, the game would have expected you to do. The game would have expected you to... Uh, talk, go to Fort Maya. Uh, do your mission there with Maya. Go to... Or what? Maybe. Or at least least would have expected the game. Now the thing is, he's only now recognizing that I got rid of the slavers. That I did like... So long ago. This is weird. You've done a noble thing. Thank you. They had long been a thorn in our side, but one we were hesitant to remove on our own. You've done us a considerable favor. Thousands suffered because of them. Of course, I did something. But that just really tells my character that I'm perhaps not comfortable with uh, the shady stuff. What did you have against the slavers? Deadfire is a troubled place, beset by all manner of predation and lawlessness. Adventure stories blame it on the fury of Helia's storms and the hunger of Andra's beasts. Historians like Maya's own dear brother would spin you a tale of isolation and trade booms. He also said that sharing knowledge and sharing cannon fire were as different as birds and foxes. All of that merely obscures the plain yet hard truth. The Juana lack the will to defend their homeland. I don't... I don't agree with that. So basically the Juana live here, they are like a caste-based, tribal, society, and, uh, and uh, they have Luminous Adra, and Luminous Adra is damn valuable, so everybody showed up for the Luminous Adra, and they're not quite ready for these major factions. And, uh, yes, it's a problem. I suppose I shouldn't say that to him. I don't think they lack the will. I think they very much wa want to defend and want to stand up for themselves, but they kind of like the power. He stops and looks up at you for the first time since hearing your explanation. He's recovering himself, waiting for your reaction. I agree, they should have stopped this. You're being too hard in the Juana. How do you figure that? Nah, yes, that's great. Uh, just, uh, just go for more questions. Allow me to illustrate. He brings his hands together and clears his throat. Two thousand years ago, our people began the conquest of Rawatai. The land was new to us. Many of its inhabitants were better equipped. Okay. He tends his fingers and raises his eyebrows. But we overcame them. We were unified where they were scattered. 
And we were not content to huddle in cliff caves and subsist. We were determined to make a better life for ourselves. I see. What are you going with this? Sounds like you stole land and livelihood from a lot of people. The people who made that journey and established Ruatai did what they had to. What's your point? The Huana don't don't have to be warriors to deserve happiness. I'd rather just hear him out. What's well let's just go with the fourth point. What's your point? Juana doesn't doesn't have to be warriors to deserve happiness. Actually, they might have to To some extent, uh, need to defend themselves. Where are you going with this? The Valians and the Principi will tear Deadfire asunder, and the Juana will stand by and let it happen. So, we must do everything we can to defend the archipelago and its people. I suppose the Principi kind of stand for uh, greed and chaos. Uh, the Valians don't really care. Uh, they definitely don't really stand for order, except... But they, they definitely stand for greed as well. But I suppose they some somewhat stand for order, in a way. But I think the Deadfire, uh, Royal Deadfire Company is the one that really... Uh, uh, most of us try to stand for order. <clears throat> the Valians just don't really care too much. They just try to be uh, legitimate thieves, I suppose. They don't care how it happens. Okay. We shall ensure that the slavers do not return by stationing one of our most elite fleets at Crooksburg. I've seen that. Why are you telling me this? If you had those ships, why didn't you send them against the Crooksburg yourself? Great question. And give the Valians and the Juana cause to unite against us? <laughs> no. In any case, our attentions are now focused on Sayuka for now. I'm sure the Hazanui will summon you when the time is right. After all, all this time, I still don't understand who you are or what you believe in. He watches you with the blank, uh, with that blank but thoughtful stare you've come to recognize. In the tiny movements of his eyes, you come to see him sizing you up, deciding how much to tell you. At last, he smiles faintly. Who we are. What does this even mean? Why the search for permanence in a transient existence? One day, our bodies will perish and our souls will return to the wheel. Every word we've ever spoken, everything we've ever known will be forgotten with us. His expression is one of the distant amusement, as though these notions are no more troubling than the far-off clamor of crowds. But this, this will remain. Prolonging the soul is a fool's errand. Clinging to a grand past is vanity. I want to take part in building something that will last beyond me. That is true immortality. You're an amoral, unprincipled lunatic. Uh, even these things will crumble eventually. Well... Be careful, you don't know what future generations will make of your legacy. That's interesting. Consider the work of the Anguithans. How much of it stands? How much has shaped our way of life? The key is to build well. But you and I have much to do, and little time to discuss philosophy. I can't. It's a big secret. Uh-huh. Someone's afraid of being... So, that's it. We don't have anything new to do. Wrong. Maybe we can talk to the big boss, big big guy upstairs. But most of all, we gotta go northeast, finally. 
and explore that uh, that area of the map. Start with the Picardo Observatory. So you have anything new for me? I don't think so. You look like you've come with a- Nope. Go away! We're getting strong. It, it would be nice to see, to f run into some tougher enemies, I suppose. Get some legendaries. Uh, yep, yeah, let's go out to shoot the gate. Also, just because we have a uh, crappy option doesn't mean we have to go with either of them. That's not how it works. I suppose the problem with some of the other factions is that they are not really major players. And, and it does seem like to me that the... The traders, the Valian traders, don't really seem to care too much about governing. They just want the most money while still being legitimate in a way. The Principi obviously can cannot be considered for such a role. Uh, the Huana, I would say that <sighs> the problem with the Huana is that I don't know, their, their way of government is just so odd. They kind of need to... Uh, progress so much in such a little time, and they don't have the time. They have to transition from uh, a tribal... caste-based society that lives on islands to... something completely Kneel different and, and united against the uh, that that protects the resources they have and we leave by sea and queen wakaza is not going to do it that much is certain i suppose i didn't help her too much by Letting the dragon loose. But if anything, I wouldn't wanna... Uh, put any of them in power. I suppose I, I really don't deserve to be in power either. <laughs> because what, I, what do I do? Kill a bunch of people, take their stuff? <laughs> there needs to be someone in power. Who's better than me and better than them? Oh, what? Finally! Killing people! Yes! He's level 7? Hey pirates, what's up? They actually attacked me. That's a big ass ship you got there. Well, they scaled up a little bit, but I don't think they will have a chance. Should I send in a spell? Or should I auto resolve it? Oh boy. 
Okay, maybe use a spell. Just lower the damage we take. Nah, we can clean them up. Can we just do a wilting wind? Not hit friendlies. Oh, that hurt a lot. Okay, so seems like they got garbage. They had nothing. Amora went up. Does it actually matter? Like, having maximum morale? Does it give us any bonus? Because we had 20%? Yeah. We still have 20%. I'm okay with that. Can't zoom out anymore. Mortar's wrath. What? Captain, a moment. You hear the voice of, of Shieldmaster Dahlia raised in question, then an insistent knock on at your at your cabin door. Shieldmaster Dahlia pokes their head into your quarters and frowns. He found the man drifting on a piece of flotsam. The deck hands tried to talk to him, but he's speaking in a tongue none of us have ever heard before. Should we bring him on board? See if we could get a few words of sense out of him? Or would you rather we leave him to his fate? Bring him on board! I'll meet him on the deck. What? No. Alright, let's talk to this man. He's down on his luck. Welcome to the crew, or I don't know. You find a young man waiting for you on deck. He wears a uh, heavy clothing of a kind you've never seen and colors of his tabard bold and bright. Wouldn't you take that off if you're, if you are like a uh, ship, shipwrecked and you're just uh, like waiting to be rescued on a piece of flotsam? Shouldn't you be, shouldn't you take that off, off, and, uh... I'm not saying, like, necessarily throw it away, but, like, just in case you get into the water. Uh, I mean, the, the heavy armor could be, a, could be trouble, especially if you, uh, already went on for days, and, uh, <clears throat> and you don't really have, a uh, your power, I suppose. He stands, but... Barely sudden, sun scorched and battered, he can hardly keep his feet. He stumbles forward a bit, then rights himself. He looks at you war warily, bleary eyed, exhaustion heavy on his shoulders. Are you right? <laughs> what? He coughs out the last word, then buckles over and vomits a tremendous amount of seawater onto the deck. Was I supposed to understand any of that? Either the words or the vomiting. La pilikiko, la caris, kezila stahun. His eyes. He he knits his eyebrows. His words are unfamiliar to you. They sound low and hard edged, but his tone is soft with confusion. Um. Uh, do you speak a, a Diran? Ke te tahibi. Point to yourself and slowly say your name. Ah, ah, keket segu kisa reka, reka, ta? Okay. Your name is Reki. Ta, ta. He turns away, casting his gaze over the rough sea. 
What he's thinking is unclear, but you can guess by the way him pulsing hard in his neck that the tight fists at his sides that he seems to be coming to a decision. <laughs> What? Welcome aboard, Reki. Da, Yuki, Ketagi, Lashta Sam. What? Okay, we can make him a fighter barbarian, fighter monk. Okay, you gotta be a. I don't know, fighter monk. How about that? He's one of the sidekicks in the game. Except uh, we're not gonna take him. Go up. What? We need to continue exploring northeast of the dead fire. What? Hey, mister, you wanna die? Principe Sempatrena? Attack me! You don't wanna attack me? I guess we gotta fight. I got some tanks. They're ready for a fight. Oh. The order is correct, actually. That's actually somewhat surprising. Let's do a uh, wilting wind. Reku's dead. Oh boy. No, don't do it! Reki is only knocked out. Oh, he's only level 1. I might just have to level him up. Just so he doesn't get instantly KO'd. I have auto level up turned off. I think it's fine to play with all two level, perhaps once, but it just kind of limits the characters and what can you uh, get from them. Also, like it makes you uh, perhaps rush for the characters, especially if you're like have your second playthrough, or maybe you just don't take the characters because uh, their options just make no sense. Lane Walker Vasali. I kind of want to avoid that. Currently, I feel like uh, my characters are just uh, useful, I suppose, in general. I suppose the game would be a little bit harder if. Uh, I went with the automatic. Hey, oh no. What's up with these Nagas? Okay, let's place that. No! Oh, retarget! Retarget! Can't make a dent. This thing isn't doing the job. That jail I think is fine. Take him out! After him. Yeah? I think the AI is wrong. Uh, 
Uh, how about go with the nearest target? Because sometimes we just run around. Although it makes more sense with the lowest deflection. Playing the Marauder, dying. Grant undecisive. <laughs> you kidding me? I have the door ready. I don't need an item to be undecisive. It doesn't even show what it does, so... <laughs> Great. So... Save. Keep exploring the northeast of the Deadfire. See some islands, like this one with the Corno. Now probably at the, well, well we, we're going uh, of course west right now, and we're gonna head to the Carnas Laboratory. Oh, what? Look at that. Looks like trouble. We can just uh, open up on them like this. Can we? Can we though? I don't know. I can't. Oh boy, these guys are so screwed. Oh. The corner bounty. You trying to start something? Hey, Merc Fighter, you wanna die? Sure thing. <gasps> Excel. Ooh, what is this? It looks good. Plus three armor rating. Armor lost when hit, but regenerates. And half restored per second. Uh, per twelve second. That's very good. That's superb. But. That's interesting. That's definitely one of the better light armors we can use. I like the Devil of Karak breastplate. This is rather good. I guess we can replace that with a new fancy thing we found right now. The Flesh Mender. Alright, enjoy. Oh, I'll give her a bad Okay. Ah, uh, we're just gonna go away. So what did I ma miss at the Bikarna's uh, obs observatory? Because it was some time ago. Come on. Go! Oh, oh. I'm not in the ship. I suppose that explains that. Sea shanties! I don't know any sea shanties. Isolated beach, abandoned village. Ah! Uh, sure! Okay, we're gonna check it out. Wait, can we go there? We can't go there? Oh, we can't go there. Let's go to the isolated beach first. When Nura cleft. As you make your way along the road, you notice the light dimming as if uh, a shadow has fallen over you. You glance around, unsure of where it's coming from. The air feels thick, pregnant with unseen energy. The road ahead looks clear, but you've been deceived by appearances before. Investigate the surroundings with everything. Um, quite the check. 
How about you do it? A large stone stands just off the road and you and your head swims as you approach it. Look at that. 14 arcana. Behind it you locate an unusual collection of bones and sticks, a small welder totem that glows balefully, its power disturbing the essence around it. Destroy the totem. With a few brutal strikes, you reduce the totem to a pathetic pile. The air immediately clears. The droning you heard before replaced with a nearby rustling. A large naga slurs forward, hissing, its tongue flickering between long fangs, a talon tip finger extended toward you. A few other nagas hiss in choral response, and the group approaches, their savage weapons at the ready. Savage nagas? I don't know, I kind of feel bad about leaving those Nagas alive because they seem to not get the message that I'm a friend of all Nagas. Not so much though. But at least I gave them a chance. And I feel 1% justified killing every single Naga of all time that I ever meet. Oh, come on, guys. Okay, let's blow them up. Yeah, they don't have a lot of good gear. Sure. I just leave. You must gather your party before. Forth. Abandoned village. Just a uh, search. The hand was cleft. Daily wages 40? Oh, because they are getting more experienced, I suppose. Also, we got a coal mine there. <clears throat> the jungle grows increasingly dense as you travel east. The shade provided by the can canopy above does little to mitigate the heat. Moisture and the perpetual core of insects thick in the air. The path rises to a sharp incline, and your legs ache as you ascend. Slowly, the jungle tends, and you find yourself atop a long ridge. Before you spreads a yawning chasm. It stretches from the mountains in the north toward the sea to the south, and you can make out the bottom uh, for the darkness. Curiously, a rope spans the divide. Search the surrounding area. There is nothing overly suspicious, certainly no sign of traps. Recent footprints uh, crowd the rocks as the uh, the rope is anchored to. Though Kit and Ogre both, several sets it looks like. Cross the rope. Let's examine the rope. It looks strong enough to cross it, you think? Take advantage of the view? From the top of the cliff, you can look back over the western expanse of the island. The death fire shimmers blue towards the horizon. The islands of uh, Kuao Orikuhu just visible to the south. You can even make out the defiant anchor in the distance. It's as if the entire eastern side of the island was forced, upon, forced up out of the ground. Or perhaps the western half sank into the sea. On the northeast, the thin line of smoke rises from the jungle. I don't suppose you know what this place is? You? The yawning chasm? Why don't you give it a name and see if it, it catches on? Let's cross the rope. The rope creaks as you grab hold and shimmy out, shimmy out onto it. You push yourself across, hand by hand, until you hang suspended over the gorge. Your muscles tingle and your hands burn, and you got further, and you've got further left to go than you already crossed. Keep going. You do it. You continue across the gorge, your sweat dripping into the abyss below you. At last, you reach the safety of the of the far side. Beyond the canyon, 
The jungle opens up into a broad field interspersed interspersed with huge fruit dotted trees. The jungle continues towards the mountains to the north, but the, to the southeast of the dead fire is visible above a sharp decline towards the shore. What draws your eyes, however, is that is the side that rises before you. One of the trees, blackened and blistered by flame, hosts a number of almana sized corpses suspended by the neck. You see that, right? Watcher, I'm not caught in another nightmare, am I? So his eyes track from course to corpse, and a wind steals across her face. <clears throat> hey, I'm not dreaming this, right? Look, if I wanted to see this kind of tank, I would have stayed home. Either his uh, mouth firm diverts his attention to the ground nearby. Nearby movement and voices grab your attention. You see, of all people, four members of your crew standing around the base of the tree. We should bury them, it's what they would want. And what the gods demand. Ram Dumbrigri growls. What? Why are you guys there? Sure, Irina answers, right after we finish going through their pockets. They don't have pockets, Shieldmaster Delia says, strictly speaking. When AZ frowns up at the tree, is anyone else worried about who did this? It clearly wasn't Beast or Kit. You're suggesting an ogre wouldn't hang a bunch of uh, corpses, Irina asks, because these look like ogre prints to me. Eyes wide, Rum Dum Riguri snaps to attention. Captain! What are you doing here? Oh, sick. Irina coughs. Uh, we were out gathering supplies for the Defiant, Captain, just as uh, we always do when we are docked. The hand points at the tree, and uh, this seemed worth investigating. Those aren't supplies, they are corpses. Cut them down and give them proper burial. Find anything interesting? Arms crossed, uh, Irina frowns at the ground. Not yet, we haven't been here long enough to take a good look around. That's not entirely true, Vanizzi says. Look at the wounds on these folks and the rope used to string them up. It, it all suggests raiders from the Eastern Reach. Damn. Iron size. There you go again, shoving off for the captain. Showing off for the captain. How did you even get here? Shieldmaster Dahlia looks uh, slightly flummoxed by the question. We're sailors, captain. Climbing is part of the job. Besides, Irina chimes in. There was a rope. The line over the gorge wasn't yours, then. No, Captain. When is he answers with a shake of the head. I doubt any of us even own rope that doesn't belong to the Defiant. I own a rope, Irina grumbles. It's eight feet long and in fine condition, thank you. Those aren't supplies, they're people. Cut them down and give them burial. Round them, Rig Ree smiles and salutes. Of course, Captain. We'll see to it right away. They draw knives and make their ways toward the tree. Maya pinches the bridge of her nose. A few minutes later, Vanizzi approaches you. Excuse me, Captain. Though you might want to see these. They look special. The sailor presents a pair of Juana shoes. They're a little... Suity, but otherwise no worse for wear. Autaka? Healing done? Oh, this is a good priest spell. Uh, good priest uh, boots. I'm, I'm done. Uh, you move towards the tree. Vultures perched along its branches peer down at you like judges presiding over a court. Search for the presence of spirits. You see the spirits at the edge of your vision almost without trying. When you open yourself to their presence, they wash over you. A torrential rush of blistering pain and icy fear. The foreign kit jostle you with shoulder and elbow, prod you with blade and spear. Their armor, too heavy for the death fire, shines in the firelight as if they were virtuous. You spit. No. There is no virtue in these godless raiders. They killed the young druid, they broke the elder's staff, and stole the doctor's herbs. Now they burn Mira's tree. Will it ever 
again host every color known to God or kit against the perfect azure dome of the sky. Come on, it's so poetic. There's no way uh, she was thinking that. You pray it will. You pray to Amira, to Nagati, to Rikohu, Kopaha, and Tangaloa both. And to the faces of Tuamophai. What more can cause these foreigners? Can, what more can these foreigners take from you? You wonder as they cut off lengths of rope. The vision ends abruptly, washing away like water over the side of the ship's deck. <sighs> Wanna put that lamp of yours to use, Sori? With a solemn nod, the dawn star raises her lantern, a harsh swig, then the light from the inside bursts like a dying star as she reaps the spirit of the lost. Search the area. Ah, uh, you do it. Frowning Maya waves you over and points out a few fraudities. While the clothing these Oman wear resembles that of uh, the Juana, they favor hides and leathers over cloths and shell. Some were stabbed before they were hanged, bearing wounds consistent with daggers or swords. A few have had their throats slit. A few have burn marks. The tree was uh, clearly burned before they were killed. Leave the tree and continue my journey. You cross the clearing, leaving the morbid tree behind, and re enter the jungle. Okay. Quite the chat we had there. We had some. What kind of shoes you got? That's garbage. This is your new shoe. The action speed. Look at this. Every 1.5 seconds. Really good. Anyway. Not exactly every 1.5. Every 1.8. Still, pretty good. Collapse coal mine. Oh, more text adventures. In the distance, you spy a mine set into the side of uh, the hill. Its entrance just barely peeking out from between the trees. Uh, hike the hike up. <clears throat> as you hear the mine, oh, as you near the mine, a loud explosion rocks the ground. A flurry of terrified birds bursts from nearby trees, and a massive cloud of dust rockets out of the cave mouths. Okay, we are entering the cave, possibly finding the mercenaries who are responsible for the atrocity that was uh, committed nearby. And I just wanted to go toward Berkana's, Obser Berkana's observatory. Damn. Not the first time. Superb. You're surrounded by explosives, and hopefully not the last. What do you have for you, big brute? We only needed the one barrel, one. Maybe if you'd told me that before, we'd have a mine to go and loot. You're the ass with the giant cannon. You should know how explosives work. Friends, we have more than enough gunpowder to solve this problem. Uh, uh won't work. Oh, now you know what to do with the black powder, sure. Leave him be and grab a shovel, Akea. Take the shovel yourself. I'll keep the watch. Wasn't built for manual labor. Don't you dare doze off like last time. Sounds like Maya's voice actor. <laughs> Take him down, but watch hey, out Akea. for the barrels. Ooh. Hey guys, what's up? Uh oh, that's gonna. That's gonna leave a mark. Wait, where are you? Oh, it was interrupted, right? Of course it was. There's no way it's never. It's not interrupted. If it can be interrupted. Okay, let's just. Drop a freezing pillar on top of their head. This is gonna kill them all. Are we having a tough fight or what? Okay. 
Come on. Just drop a freezing pillar. Soti's about to die. Aren't, aren't you gonna heal yourself? Is her healing reduced? Oh, she healed herself, but... Dent. <laughs> Uses a cannon. Alright, over him. This seemed uh, stronger than usual. Nah. Garbage. Garbage. What else we got? Got it. It's not gonna work. Sure, let's take that. Take that as well. I guess that's it. We can go away now. Oh. Did we loot her? No, we didn't. Whoa, okay. Wow. Whoa, okay, 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 okay. Here we go. Uh, but that's just one pistol. Basic decks uh, deal lesser raw damage. Supercharge the arcing blaster magic bullets, causing each shot to cause additional crush crow damage at cost of reload speed. Additional enchantments can cause additional effects. Interesting. But this is a pistol? Like, it looks pretty uh, crappy. Oh. Basic attacks deal lesser rad raw damage, so it deals less damage, but it's raw. Eh. I'm not a huge fan of that. With the penetration already, I'm against most opponents. I don't know what should be the name of this island. It's gonna be called Just Hanging. So. What else we got here? Defiant. Yep. Okay. There is another island over there. Motario Cozy. And the Carnes Observatory. Finally. We need to go there. And figure out how, what to do here. I don't know. I really have no idea. We need more information. We need to find some. That that's it. We just didn't find the the right information that we could use uh, with the machine. However, uh, this is a good time to take a break. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.